Welcome back to Create with Suzette. This module about Photoshop CC is about setting up the bridge. Now in older versions, when you got Photoshop, bridge came with it. But now with the Creative Cloud, it's available, but it's not necessarily downloaded unless you tell it to do so. So if you have the Creative Cloud open, you can go into your Apps tab, and then you can see all the different apps, and you're just gonna click on the bridge, wherever it is in the list, and uh, download that app so you have Bridge. Now, Bridge is an awesome tool for navigating your images with a very visual way, but it's not set up for optimum speed, but I'm gonna show you how to do that. Let's get started. So whenever I open up Photoshop and I want to look for an image, I don't just go to open, I go to the next tab down, which is browse in bridge. And that's gonna open up my bridge. And this is how I view it. I have two different setups. I have the thumbnails and the film strip. So with thumbnails, I have about six images wide and I have my folder tree over here. I've got my labels. So it's very easy to see them. And then when I go to film strip, it puts a vertical film strip down the side, gives me a giant preview. And I just use the down key on the keyboard to scroll through them quickly. And it's a great way to view them and I just can't even live without this. So I wanna show you how to set up the thumbnail view and the film strip view, because the default view is essentials. So when I click on essentials, that's what I get. All this stuff that I don't really need. And while it might be useful, it's not really the optimal way that I want to view my images when I'm working with them in Photoshop. So what I'm gonna do is first show you how to set this up and then save each workspace. Once you've downloaded Bridge, you're going to go into Photoshop and go File, Browse in Bridge, and it will pop up the interface. It may not look like this, so what I would do is go to Essentials and click on the little down arrow here on the option bar and go to Reset Standard Workspaces. What it'll do is reset it to the normal setup and it also makes it smaller. Now for me, I wanna see my bridge covering up Photoshop completely. So I usually make it bigger by dragging out the edges so it covers up Photoshop. And then what I wanna do is customize this. Starting from Essentials, I can look over here and see Previews, Publish, Metadata, Keywords. I don't really need any of those. So the easiest way to close those panels, instead of going up to Window and closing them manually, all I have to do is mouse over this bar here and drag this bar to the edge of the window and it pushes those four panels off and you can go up to your window and see that it closed them and that was a lot faster than manually going in four times to uncheck. So that worked out. Let's also go in here. Now favorites is on front, but I would like folders to be in front. So I'm gonna click on my folders because I like to see my folder tree. And then I'm going to take the filter and collections. Those are good. I just wanna maybe make it smaller because I only need a couple filters but I want a longer folder tree. So I'm gonna click on my desktop and turn down the arrow and navigate to a folder of images like my bridge demo. And there we go. Now we can see more of what's going on. I'm in an actual folder with images in it. Those are way too small though. So down at the bottom of the window, we've got four different views. We've got the square thumbnail grid, we've got the regular thumbnails, we have details, and we have uh, list. So I hardly ever use details and list. I will usually use the grid or the thumbnails. So let's start off with the thumbnails. And I want them bigger though. See the slider here at the bottom? So I'm gonna take my slider bigger so my images are about six wide. That way I can see them. I can see the whole name if it's got a long name and I'm getting close to where I want. So that right there really helps me see my images quickly. I can scroll on the side. So that's what I want for my thumbnail view. 
And I am going to make sure right here on the option bar that the sort is by file name because I am going to save this as a workspace and I want it to be um, set up so it's always by file name, not manually or something else. So the easiest way to save that is uh, to go to this little drop down arrow next to your workspaces and say new workspace and we'll call this create with Suzette and thumbnails. Now save window location as part of workspace. Yes, I want that. I want it to be full window covering up Photoshop and save sort order. Yes, I want that as well and say save. So there you go. Now that's only half of the equation. I also want a film strip view, which is an awesome way to view things up close, see how sharp they are. And so what I'm going to do is start off with one that Photoshop gives us. Gets us pretty close. So from the little drop down on the workspaces, I'm going to choose um, film strip. So there we go. There's film strip. Wait, but it's little thumbnails along the bottom. And what I want is it along the side. So my vertical shots are as big as possible. So what I'm going to do is first go over here to the left and click on folders. So my folder tree is visible again. Make my filter a little bit smaller. And then I want this content window to be over to the side. Well, it's difficult to put it over on the side unless you create an empty window first. So I'm going to take my mouse far to the right hand side and see how it passes over the edge. There's a little move tool. If I move that bar over, it reveals an empty panel. So once I have an empty panel, I can click over here on the content tab and drag it over. Now see how it turns blue? That means it's going to occupy that space. There you go. So if I make it really wide, it'll be multiples wide, but I don't really want that. I want it to be a single column so that when I click through with the arrow key, it doesn't skip every other one. So now my content window is tall and skinny. My preview window is huge in the middle. I've got my folder tree and I have my filter. This is exactly the way I want it. So again, make sure that it's sorting by file name and then you get to save this one. So up here to window, workspace, new workspace, and we'll call this create with Suzette and film strip. Again, it's going to save the window and the workspace and save. Okay, so we are making major progress. Now here's what's so nice about that. I can flip between these in just an instant and say, um, you know, I want to see if this one's really sharp. I flip over to here to film strip. I can do my arrow keys up or down. It's super fast to navigate through your files. And we're photographers. We're very visual. So this is an excellent way to find your files. So there you go. That's the, the primary thing that you need to do in Bridge. However, we also want to set up our preferences. So let's do that real quick. Right now, the interface is dark gray. I kind of want it to be light gray. Plus, I have some um, colored bars and I have stars in here. So I want to show you how to use the ratings and the, the labels. And notice all my labels are white. Well, it says over here blue and yellow here in the filter segment, but clearly they're not blue or yellow. Well, that's because I reset my preferences. I just updated the, the bridge to the new 2018 version and I reset my preferences. So I need to go back and change my preferences and I'll show you how to do that. So if you are on a PC, you're going to go to edit then preferences. If you're on a Mac, you'll go to Adobe Bridge CC 2018 and then go to preferences. So inside the preferences, what we're going to do is just change a few things. Most of it is just fine at default, but let's see. General is fine. Thumbnails, playback, metadata keywords. Okay, labels. This is the first thing I'm going to change. So one of the things I do is I change the names of the colored bars because I, I just want to have the colors. I also uncheck require the command key because 
to be speedy, I just want to hit 7 to make it yellow. I don't want to do Shift 7, just 7. So I uncheck the Require Command key. And then what I do is I change the names of each one of these. Now I use all caps and I'm always consistent so that any computer I use, it's going to be the same. Yellow, green, All right, so you can see the shortcut is 6789, and there's no shortcut for purple. So my file type associations, those are pretty much right on. I don't have to change those. Um, cache, startup script, I want everything to start, advanced, interface. Now this is new. So this allows me to make a lighter colored interface if I want, but notice it just does the edges and the folders. This is new. You can actually use the image backdrop and change the slides on your images. So that's really nice. So I'm just going to lighten those up just a little bit and then I'm going to say OK. So now they're set and notice my yellow and blue um, labels are back. So that's really helpful. So now I want to show you how handy it is with the filters. So when I click blue filter over here in the filter tab, I can see just the blue ones. Those actually happen to be the ones that Johnny did. And if I click just yellow, those are all portraits where the other ones are landscape. I can also do my five stars. So I've got two of them that are five stars. Now if I do the five stars plus blue, then there's only one file that's blue and five stars. So it's actually really helpful to be able to use your ratings and your stars. Now, keep in mind the shortcut for the numbers uh, with the stars, one, two, three, four, five is the stars, six, seven, eight, nine is red, yellow, green, blue. So there you go. Now you know how to set up your bridge, your interface, do your preferences, and change your labels. You are ready to get going. Thanks for joining me on Create with Suzette.